Hello everyone, it's Braylon. Welcome back to my channel. And I realized that there was a video that I never filmed, never filmed, never talked about, and I feel like it's worth talking about, and I hope it'll help some people as I talk about this, because I wish I had known it sooner. So, let's get into it. I wanna to talk today about IEP specific work and the ways in which I incorporate that into my classroom. I wanna show examples. I'm gonna kinda of talk a little bit about broad IEP goals and kind of help you along. I forgot to mention, um, if you're new to my channel, I'm a special ed teacher. I teach a self-contained classroom of like lower elementary students and all of my students work on their individual IEP goals and we work really hard on them. Um, we also do, you know, whole group lessons that are more broad um, skills that we're learning. And um, yeah, we kind of combine all that together. I don't, I'm not gonna go into curriculum that I'm using. I feel like if I do that, then people will be like, oh, I don't use that curriculum. This isn't gonna work for me and they'll click off. I want everyone to be able to feel like they can see themselves in this classroom or in this scenario um, and make it as broad as possible. So for me, I just generally use the school curriculum, the gen ed curriculum that I use at my school, I modify it. We also do use other specific special ed programs, but it's not necessary. All of my students have IEPs. They have IEP goals for reading, writing, math, usually speech, usually occupational therapy, usually physical therapy, and some sort, of, some sort of like social and or functional life skills. My job as the educator, right, is to make sure that by the end of that IEP period, they have met those goals or they've gotten pretty close to them, they've been working on them. And it's hard to do when you have multiple grades in a classroom and you're trying to follow the gen ed curriculum. So you're like trying to follow the gen ed curriculum, you have like four or five grades, like should I be teaching third grade, fourth grade, first grade, and you want kids to get used to being in a class, raising their hand, doing some whole group stuff. You don't have the staffing to do six individual small lessons because that's not realistic. So like, how do you keep the ball rolling? My first couple years of teaching, I would do a whole group lesson and we'd break into our small groups and that was it. And I didn't focus as much on IEP goals. I kind of looked at them, I kind of took data, but I mostly would just be, sorry, there's someone walking through the hallway. Um, I'd honestly mostly just be like, oh, you know, if they're working on phonics through what we're reading and through, you know, the extra work I might give them, they'll get it. And I was just not a good educator. I feel like my first year of teaching, I did not focus as much on the IEP goals because I was so stressed and so overwhelmed. I will kind of do a quick brief of like how I run my classroom. But like I said, you should go watch those other videos of how I structure my day and the slideshow one that I just made. Basically for every subject, I have a whole group lesson. And it's usually about something more broad. So even though, for example, in math, some kids are higher, some kids are lower, um, for a month we talk about addition. One week we talk about it adding with our hands, adding with um, counters, using a number line, and those are the broad things we practice in the whole group lesson with everyone together. Some kids can multiply, some kids can do other things, but we're working on those fun foundational skills as a whole group, 10, 15 minutes. It's all just to be together and to work on being in a classroom. Then we break into small groups and some are at a table with one paraprofessional with me and I group them by um, their current IEP goals. And then whoever, say there's three kids with Mr. Harris. Three of those, those three kids are working on addition. So Mr. Harris is gonna go and he's gonna grab there are three math specific folders. And in that, there might be work on skip counting, on addition with manipulatives, whatever it is specifically that they need to work on for their IEP is what they're working on in math. Most people have goals, most kids have IEP goals, right? But it usually has different benchmarks or objectives. I pick one objective to work on at a time, maybe two for some kids. I think that a lot of special ed teachers get tripped up because they're like, which goal do I work on first or which objective do I work on first? I pick one and I pick the most simplest one. And if an IEP goal is written well, each skill of an objective or a benchmark should flow into the next one. So that's how I write them. So if um, a kid's in third grade, the first thing they're working on is um, one-to-one correspondence and counting. Next thing they're gonna do is making groups. Then the next objective might be, you know, combining manipulatives to put together to add up to seven, and then they're working on addition with their fingers and their, you know, whatever. People might not be as specific with objectives like that, but overall, the flow should work. So I work on one objective at a time. So that's the same for reading. 
we do the whole group. They go to their small group and they do their reading work and they do like three or four activities with that teacher. Um, math and writing, we do a writing thing usually about our hands. Um, excuse me. And then we go into small groups and they work on their writing work or their writing practice, whether it's tracing or putty or cutting or whatever it is. And social studies and science are the same thing. So I say all that to say that every subject they're getting a whole group and they're getting a small group. But what I was finding was I wanted to take more data because I only take data once a week on IEP goals. I wanted more data on how they were maintaining those IEP goals. Once I got my act together, I realized that I had some blocks of time that were sensory blocks or, you know, iPad time or whatever. And I decided to make one of my blocks of the day be an IEP work bin time. And so I want to kind of show you what that looks like. Obviously, this doesn't work for every classroom, but it really works for me. And I needed this catch all time to be like, okay, oh my gosh, Braylon, like get your act together. Where is this kid? What data have you not taken? Which kid do you need to see specifically? And make sure that you finalize that. Schools are different. Some schools care a lot about that. Some schools don't care. But regardless, an IEP is a legal binding document. You need to work on those goals, number one. So I've talked a lot, and I'm sorry for that. But I kind of want to show you some examples and show you what I'm talking about before I bring you to the IEP work bins which is how I maintain everything. <laughs> okay, so we're over here in my classroom and this is the box of justice. It has all the math folders here, all the reading folders here, and the writing here. For science, um, when we do science work, I usually already have the, it's usually like a cut and paste activity or a matching activity. So they don't need a folder for it because they're kind of working on the same thing. So. The math is up here. Like I said, so for example, I will show you, none of them have names on it because I'm a YouTuber and I can't show with names. And they're working on a bunch of stuff. They're working on fractions. I made this ratchet thing where they have to, oops, they have to match the picture to the fraction. They're working on addition. I'm not giving away any of their IP goals. Don't worry, um, very vague. They're working on a missing number. So some are file folders. Some are just simple things I made. Skip counting. I made this with a envelope and index cards. And they're really working on counting money. This is a printout of a Google Doc <laughs> that I'm using now and they count the money and they tell me the total. So that is a big thing. Now this seems like, what are you doing? <laughs> this doesn't look like a lot of work. How does that last 30 minutes? It does because it's slow and they need a lot of breaks. All my students, they work for five minutes, they get an iPad. They work for five minutes, they get a trade in because it takes a while, but we drill it. We drill it three or four times each time and they're getting it and it's really working. And then we will do some maintenance. So that's just an example of what it looks like in a math block when they sit down in their small group. So now that works the same in reading. For example, that same student uh, I'll pick a different, yeah, no, that student and a few other students, so it's not specific, are working in reading. They're working on reading a story and identifying characters. Um, they're working on verbs. Oh yeah, here's the page I made for this story. So as they read, they can find the vocab words and they take a break and they work on some verbs. And the biggest thing they're working on is character and setting, which I just made this simple thing with a file with a manila folder and sheet protectors and velcro and they read the story and they tell me the character and the setting and there are a bunch of them that's it that's all they do and so after a couple weeks i leave this work in here for a couple weeks i change it out sorry there's a loud car i change it out for um a, another activity that hits at the same skill so that they generalize it so then after a couple weeks, so now it's been like a month into that skill, I might say, oh, they've mastered this. I've taken data on it. They've mastered it. And now I'm going to move on to the next IEP objective or the next piece of an IEP objective. And then it's like, what do I do with all this work? Like they don't need it anymore. I might give it to another kid because that kid might be working on stuff. Um, I keep a whole 
as you can see i keep a whole wall oh my gosh i can't reach it i keep a whole wall of stuff over here so it's like what do i do with all this extra stuff um that is where the iep bin comes in so um, each day for 30 minutes i have an iep bin block and here they are oops i gotta move you so you can kind of see i don't want to show the names here are the bins some of them are empty because i'm refilling them right now here are my bins and each student has one and it has old work that they have mastered mostly that i still want them to see every once in a while and so this whole bin i got at the dollar store for a dollar and i just put random stuff in it oops the janitor wants to come in i during that block, some I usually only have one pair of professionals, so I don't have like a full outfitted room. But some students will have an iPad or they'll have a quiet activity. I might not need to see them that day. But the kids I do need to see, um, the ones who can independently get their stuff, they come, they get their bin, they go sit down, and they work with me. So for this student, they're maintaining color words that I have. But not everything is this fancy. They're also maintaining fractions, half and whole. And I printed this. Look, it has a little chunk bit out of it. Come on. And I found these little pictures. It's not laminated. It's just cut up with a little thing. And that's what we're, we're reviewing. And it might seem silly, but after three weeks, and you know if you work with kids with autism, after about three or four weeks of not seeing something, it's easy to get it lost in translation and they haven't kept it up. And when I report on IEP goals, I also want to report on maintenance. They were getting really good with the WH question, specifically what. So I'm keeping this to maintain. Another one is, oops, oops, I almost dropped something. The other one is they're maintaining, sorry, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> they're maintaining um, the words to match the numbers. And addition, where did I see that? This addition thing I made with an envelope and a bunch of index cards. <laughs> so that is kind of what I focus on. And that's the bulk of what they do during that block. And I'm not gonna pick every kid every day, um, but I am gonna review and keep a schedule of the kids that I have been seeing and how well they're maintaining. I hope that made sense. <laughs> and the reason I talk about this is because I wish someone would have told me how to make sure that I'm hitting IEP goals and whatnot. Um, and this has been super helpful. So now I wanna transition into something else. I wanna show a couple of examples of an IEP goal and a few things that I would choose to do like activity wise to hit that goal and then how I would maintain them. So for example, let's say I got a student named Kevin. I don't have a student named Kevin, don't worry. I have a student named Kevin, pretend student named Kevin. And that student comes in, he's in second grade, and he is getting um, a lot of work around the beginning stages of, of um, rote counting. He can count, we want him to count to 20. Um, we also want him to identify numerals and um, beginning stages of patterns and stuff like, and skip counting. That's probably what kind of kid I'd get. That's a typical student I'd get. I would always start off with counting first. So then I'd get my IEP work ready for the small math groups. And I would put in, with an index card, I'd probably make cards, you know, one through five. And that student every day would look at the numbers one through five, identify them, and then put them in order. And then I, probably with that same card, would also include a baggie of cubes or a baggie of pennies or a baggie of chips of some kind. And after that student had counted those numbers, then they would take the number still on that index card and they'd have to put out one chip. And then for the index card of five, they'd put out five chips. So they're counting one to one as they're doing it. And then I would probably give them a file folder counting, you know, whatever from made for me literacy or something like apples, three apples, and you have to match the number. So everything around it is hitting at row count and recognizing numerals. And I would also probably include something that's a little bit of like a palate cleanser, like um, 
I'd probably leave an instruction for my paraprofessional to do some patterns. So with those same chips or those same cubes laying out, you know, blue, red, blue, red, and then have them work on the next one because sometimes counting can be really taxing to the brain. And so doing a more creative patterning thing would be fun. And then I would probably leave in two worksheets in that, in that folder um, that are like color, coloring ones just to color or see the number and color it red or just to color in their favorite Marvel character or something. And they would probably do one activity, get a five minute break, do the next activity, get another five minute break. And that would be the math unit for the month for them as they worked on counting. And they'd probably get it. They'd probably go all the way to number five. Then I would add in numbers to 10, numbers to 15, and they'd probably go another two weeks with that. Then they'd probably master it at that point. And so I'd take all that work out and I'd put it in the IEP work bin. And I would probably replace it with more heavily patterned things, ABA patterns, ABBA patterns. And then I would transition from patterns into patterns of numbers. Count, counting, skip counting, counting by twos to make a pattern, things like that. And that would be the transition of that student for at least six months. And so I say all that to say, um, I never, I remember my first teaching job, I got an IEP goal and then I had no guidance on what I was supposed to do with it. And then I was given this curriculum, this Jen Ed Houghton Mifflin curriculum of like, what do I do with it? Um, and if you're in that position, I would recommend taking a look at the curriculum. Maybe you could do the fun story that goes with the curriculum as your whole group, or maybe you could do you know, a song. If you've seen my video of the slideshow, I always do a song and then we, maybe we count together and then maybe we do an activity on the board where every kid comes up and counts a number and then everybody claps for them and they sit back down and that's it. <laughs> like it's very simple, very short. Um, but I want to give another example and I want to give a reading example that's a little bit more, maybe a little bit more complex. Um, let's say I had a student named Braylon. <laughs> We'll just use my own name because we know we don't have a student with that name. And um, they are in fourth grade. And Braylon is working on CVC words, right? Or mm, we'll change that. Let's say Braylon is working on comprehension of a story. So they're pretty advanced for at least for my class. <laughs> they're reading, but they're not comprehending. I, for the reading work, I would look at their objectives. The objectives are probably to answer, um, you know, setting of a story, answer characters of a story, put story in sequence order, something like that. So we'd have our whole group reading lesson and then they'd go to their small group reading. And I, in that IEP reading folder, I'd probably put things like a simple story that they know. Um, Hickory Dickory Dock, Little Red Hen. Every day they'd review that story and every day they would sequence it or every day they would just look at the character they'd on their AAC device or whatever, they'd say the character again and again and again and again. Then after a little bit of time, I would transition that to the IEP work bin and I'd put a new story with a new character for them to identify. Those are the examples. And honestly, that's how my IEP work stuff works. If you have more questions, please leave them down below. Um, but I hope this made sense. I hope this was cohesive enough, kind of explain their rationale. And maybe this is not how you wanna run your classroom, please, I'm just giving you an example. Um, but maybe it, it stirred something in your brain to think, how can I reach these goals? Or how can I make my classroom um, work to meet these goals and do the whole group at the same time? So I hope this is helpful. You guys are the best. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.